All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It's your boy, Akeem. Welcome to today's third blog. Here to give you a preview of the Purdue Boilermakers for the 2017 college football year. Now, last season, the team went three and nine overall, and they actually fired pretty much the entire coaching staff. And they have a new coaching staff from Western Kentucky, led by new head coach and Jeff Brom. But he did bring a relative, Ryan Brom, who's a good um, quarterbacks coach for the uh, Hilltoppers last season. And he is the new offensive coordinator. And I think this is going to be an interesting season for the Boilermakers as a rebuilding year, a beginning of a rebuilding process. Now, this year, they do have the return of quarterback and David Blow, who had uh, 3,300 yards passing, 25 touchdowns, and 21 interceptions. So that actually shows, if you look at those numbers, he does have the capability of throwing the football, but he just needs to make better decisions and try to lower that touchdown-interception ratio. With the addition of Bryant and Jeff Brom, I think this is that they will make that happen and teach David a thing or two at the quarterback position. Now, they no longer have their top receivers in D'Angelo, Yancey, and Bilal. Marshall, which is going to be a tough break, which means se um, seniors Gregory Phillips and Anthony uh, uh, Mabogo, Mabogu is going to have to step it up as far as the receiving core, and hopefully they can have a good season. Now, this year, they do have to return our, our running back Martel Jones, who led the team in rushing last season, but he only averaged four yards per carry. I think if they actually use that spread offense well, like they did, uh, uh, if the coaches uh, use that spread offense well, like they did at Western Kentucky, that will open things up for Martel Jones to succeed, just like how Anthony Wells did great last season for Western Kentucky and help leading the team to consecutive um, Conference USA titles. Now, as you take a look at the offensive line, they do have their best player in Kirk Barron returning at center and be a leader on the offensive unit. And all, if you look at other players, they do have uh, Grant Harmon's sophomore um, Matt McCain and Peyton Truitt, who's going to get more playing time this season in the offensive line, and Junior Beru's uh, Yakub Lakubi, who I think he has a good talent as well. But I do like the return of Cole Herdman, who actually had over 300 yards receiving last season. He can make all Big Ten honors, and you already know what they did um, with Jeff Brown and um, Brian Brown did at West Kentucky as far as spreading the offense. They did use the Tyler, well, um, Tyler Higby well at the tight end position, and they're looking to do the same with Cole or Herdman. Heading over to the defensive unit. Now, this is not the most talented defensive unit. Now, not the most talented team overall at that. But the defense, they don't really have some sexy, sexy type players. But they're gonna have to get, uh, have a lot of work cut out for him. And they have new defensive coordinators in Anthony Poindexter and Nick Holt, who's gonna be split in time cold defensive coordinators to try to turn things around and try to start this rebuilding process for the Purdue Boilermakers of uh, overall teams, particularly on the defensive unit. Now, they do have a couple of seniorities and um, seniors in the defensive line and Austin Larkin, Je um, Jell uh, Robinson, and Antoine Miles. They do have some experience, but they need to get that talent and better uh, use better techniques to get to uh, opposing backfields and wreck havoc and get into the quarterback. The linebacker in court, they have Juwan Bentley and Danny uh, Azik. Uh, is Zeke Chuwuchu. Sorry for mispronouncing your name. Not good at pronouncing names correctly. Uh, the defensive backs, they are led by uh, Dewan Hunt and C.J. Parker. And they have the return of sophomore Navon uh, Mosley and junior Tim Kaysan, who's looking to be the four starting players as far as the defensive backs. Now, they have a pretty tough schedule, and I don't really think this is going to be a good start for the Braun brothers. Um, with uh, September the 2nd, Louisville is going to be their first matchup. September the 16th is going to be against Missouri. So they have a great Louisville team, a good Louisville team, and another and an SEC opponent in the first month of this, their season. Not looking too well for the uh, Boilermakers. September 23rd against Michigan. October the 7th against Minnesota. November the 14th against Wisconsin. They also have uh, the 14th, October 14th at Wisconsin, and they have to deal with Nebraska, Northwestern, and Iowa. This is not a pretty looking schedule for the Purdue Boilermakers. As far as the rebuilding process, I think they should have tried to try to negotiate, try to find a way to get easier opponents to start off their season at least just to get this team to build that confidence. But they're already going to be jumping into the fire, and I do wish them the best of luck. I think they're going to go 3-9 and nine again. 
I don't think they're going to really get four wins this season. I don't think they're going to improve as far as the win percentage. We will see, though. They might they might try to shock us, but if David Blow has a good um season, like I like 20 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, then they might actually win a couple more games. But this is too scary of a schedule, particularly even when you start off the season against Louisville and then Missouri in September. Like I said, Northwestern, Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, to wrap up the season, those are like four or five. That, that's like six losses right off the bat. They have to deal with Michigan. I think that's going to be a loss. It's not looking too good for the Purdue Boilermakers this upcoming season. I have them going again 3-9 and nine and not making it to a bowl at the end of the year. Now, the next time I'm going to catch you guys will be in just a couple minutes. I have one more blog for today. Thank you for watching this blog. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.